it's not hard to start with smart home. You go out, you buy a bunch of things, you plug everything in and then you ask yourself, what am I actually gonna do with them? Well, today we are going to look at the how AI can help you automate your home with the existing or whatever devices you add in the future. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As the title says, today we are going to play with this AI automation suggestion. This is a Hex component. At the time of the recording, it is still not official part of the Hex repository, but once again we will be adding it manually to the repository list. So what does this tool do? What are some of the prerequisites? How much does it actually cost? And can it do everything for you? No, there is no simple or magic wand that can help you automate things without you actually getting involved. But this is as close as we can get today. There are some intentions to bring AI to Home Assistant by Home Assistant Devs, but until this is done, well, we can try and use workarounds such as this one here. As I said, there are also some costs related to that, because we are going to use OpenAI, and for this you need to set up API access over the OpenAI. And for that, of course, you also need tokens. How much tokens? It all depends on you. But we will be looking at the settings and what is actually the most expensive thing around here. So let's get started with installation. First things first, we need to add this to the Hux repository. Scroll down on the GitHub and the GitHub link will be down in the video description. We need to copy this URL, github it specialist 111 slash AI automation suggestion. Then let's jump into Home Assistant and in the Hex, click on three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL, type will be integration and click on add. That's it. The integration has been now added to the Hex repository. What we need to do next is search for it, AI automation, click on AI automation suggester, click on download and more or less that's it. At the time of the recording, version 1.0.6 is the latest available version. Since this is a Home Assistant integration, we will need to restart a Home Assistant. And it's done. And we are back. Let's go to integrations. In the integrations page, click on add integration and type AI and just click on AI automation suggester. There are just a couple of settings here before we need to jump into OpenAI and get ourselves our OpenAI API key. First one is scan frequency. Default one is 24 hours and I really do not see a reason why it should be less than 24 hours. Why? We actually have also exposed service. So if we need to run it by hand, we can use that service call. It should be 24 hours, but you can increase it to 48, 96 or whatever hours you feel comfortable with. The reason why we are not increasing but decreasing or decreasing time but increasing the number here is because it is using tokens and we do not want to use too much tokens, especially when there is actually nothing going on with our system. So moving this to, for example, 96 hours will reduce the token usage and yeah, it's a good thing for your wallet. Next thing is initial lag time. This is a timeout or waiting period when Home Assistant starts before it actually tries to run for the first time. Why do we need this lag? Because Home Assistant takes some time to update all entities and this tool needs all the entities available. So for example, if you have a network Zigbee network that some of the devices are not exposed all the time, you can probably also increase this from 10 minutes to for example 20 minutes. Then we have a, this checkbox that I don't think that is working right now. But this is a future functionality that will allow you to use local brains or local AI instead of the one hosted in the cloud. And next thing is open AI key. For that, let's briefly jump into the documentation. And there is a chapter called obtain an open AI API key. First, we need to log in into our open AI platform or open AI account. Click on the link. And if this is your first time, you need to click on sign up to sign up for account. Since I already have account, I will be clicking on login, continue with Google, and I will log in into my account. Next thing, we need to create API key. For that, we will click on link, navigate to API keys. I will create a new key for this app. Click on create new secret key. I'll call this one AI automation suggestion. It will be part of the default project. Permissions will be all, and I will click on create secret key. Please keep your secret key hidden. Do not expose it on the internet for everybody to see because somebody can use it and, oh, sorry, 
copy it and click on done. In Home Assistant, just paste your secret key that everybody knows and click on submit. That's it. Click on finish and we are done. Now it will take some time for system to run for the first time. But you do not need to wait. We can go to the developer tools, actions or what was previously known as services and use action AI automation suggester, generate suggestions. Click on perform action and that's it. Actions are now performed. But we also need to be able to see what's going on with the system. So for that, we also have additional things we can do. Let's go to our page. Let's find a page where we can add this. For example, this one when I was playing with my car, add card entities and type in AI automation suggestions. Click on save. And now we have information that there are suggestions that are available for our system. Let's click on it, show more. And we can see that there are some suggestions here. Actually, not just some, but a lot of suggestions. But if you haven't run the service call, you should also receive notification. And that is a persistent notification. Click on notifications and we can see that we have suggestion. For example, first one, person be the thinker, not home. Automation, if person be the thinker is detected as not home, send notification to a user's phone and turn off all lights in house to enhance security. Second one, for example, is for the person, second person. Then we have automation if home assistant supervisor update is off, etc, etc. And all you have to do is take into account what the system has suggested for you. And these will be improved by each and every run. Let's clear this and let's try and run it once again. Developer tools, actions, perform action. It takes some time for system to send data to cloud and to receive response. And yes, by the way, yes, you are right. The data is traveling and is sent from your home assistant to cloud to open air services so that they can generate text for you. If you are not comfortable with sending your entities and data about your system to the cloud, this service is definitely not for you. On the other hand, if you are, you will receive notifications such as this one. This is another set of suggestions which are better in my opinion. For example, when file editor update changes to on, Send a notification that encourages you to check for any important changes in the editor and to perform manual check if necessary. Or I would rephrase it and do update of that component. Let's create this one, for example. Let's copy it. Settings, automations, create automation, create new automation, add trigger, entity, state, file editor update, changes to on, add action, Send notification message. Let's select an entity, for example, notifier and message. There is an update to file editor. Go check it out. And that's it. As simple as that. Click on save, file editor, update, save. And now we have a new automation based on the suggestion that we received from the OpenAI. It's always a good idea to check out the documentation. I know I'm a hasty one and I always keep it and it always buys me somewhere where it's very painful. So first let's look at important notes. OpenAI API key security. I mentioned that. Please keep your key confidential. If somebody gets a hold of your key, they can create additional cost for you. And this is not something that you would love. Second is open AI API usage. The more you use it, the bigger the cost will be. I recommend that you disable automatic billing so that your card cannot be charged if you run out of credits and also check the logs, see how much you are using. In my case, for those two service calls I did today, the cost was less than one cent. And the third and most important thing is data privacy. We already talked about it or I mentioned it. This is a cloud service. That means that this integration is sending entity information to the open AI for it to browse through it and create suggestions. If you do not like it, if you do not want to use cloud services, then this integration is definitely not for you. There will be at some point, according to future plans, local AI version, but as far as I know, it is still not currently available. And by the way, when you're already here, don't forget to check the rest of the documentation. For example, roadmap, you have phase one, phase two, phase three, and then we have future enhancements to see where the author is going with this integration and to see if this matches your ideas and if this integration is for you or not. And while you're already here at the documentation, 
don't forget to click star because this is the minimum we can do for the author to say thanks for the awesome integration. In my opinion, this is an awesome way on how to use or tie together AI and Home Assistant and receive or get better suggestions and better smart home. But yes, I'm aware that this depends on the cloud, so if you are not comfortable with using cloud services, then this one is definitely not for you. You will just need to be patient a little bit more until the local AI version comes around. But no, I do not believe that AI will be part of this integration. You would still need to have and manage your own local language model, LLM. So keep that in mind. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting. And if you did find it interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to say thanks to the author for such an awesome integration for Home Assistant. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always post it down in the video comment section below. I may be a bit slow with answering last couple of weeks, but bear in mind, I will definitely come around and answer your question. And before I end up the video, as always, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you awesome people who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Of course, you can also go to my merchandise store and get something there. And last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.